So um, in a nutshell, I was diagnosed with multiple myeloma um, in 1996, and I started the Multiple Myeloma Research Foundation in 1998. Um, the first four to five years when we started the MMRF, um, we were really trying to build a community around the disease, and the reason is it was um, back then 100% fatal. Um, patients lived an average of three years with multiple myeloma. And there was really um, no research, no awareness of the disease at all back then. It, it truly was a complete death sentence. So um, we were very fortunate. Um, my background was on the business and science side. So we really developed the community where we could do what I'm sure a lot of foundations out there are doing right now, um, raising the money, providing strong grant programs, building a patient database, conducting roundtables. We did all of those things our first um, four to five years. But then I became a little bit frustrated um, because I could see there needed to be a lot of collaborative support. And when I say collaboration, I mean collaboration across the centers with industry and with the patient group. And I never want people to think that um, people don't want to collaborate. I just find that they don't have time or the processes in place to make it happen. And I felt like we needed to be the group that designed the collaborative models and actually developed them and spearheaded them to bring everybody together. And if we were the ones hosting the party and we did it well, that everybody would join us. So really, the second five years of our foundation, we focused on these collaborative models. So the first thing that we did was we worked with about, it started with four major academic centers that we worked with today. It's now varies between 13 and 15. And we built our own tissue bank. And um, that was a, a very large undertaking for us. But one back then was um, really critical for us to get done. In addition to that, we also decided to take on um, our own genomic initiative. Once we were banking high quality tissue, we felt we could do genomics. We were very smart to outsource with the best people like the Broad Institute. And then we also had built our own clinical network of, like I said, anywhere between now 13 to 15 centers. So um, we evaluated everybody from the business standpoint on metrics and milestones. So you did not get funding from us unless you actually achieved all the work that you said you were going to do. And it was a little unusual for academic centers to get a scorecard from us, where at the end of the year, we tiered you on how well did you do versus your counterparts. And based on how well you did, we provided um, support at your center um, because we wanted you to be rewarded for the, the good work that you were doing. So those were the first two phases of our foundation, moving from a community to then collaborative models. And where it took us, um, I think there is a slide on this, is that we became um, very much an end-to-end -end solution, where we could look from the whole drug development paradigm, which that's the part you see at the top of the slide, underneath were all the business solutions that we created um, to make sure that we could be an end-to-end -end solution for a pharmaceutical company. So if you brought a drug in, we could literally move you through the entire process from validation all the way to CME education. And that's what our team looks like, and our team is a, a real strong mix of business and science. So based on your comment, right. where are we going now, I always say now we have the three legs to the stool to move toward personalized medicine. In myeloma, we've been very lucky. We've had four drugs launched in the last five years, and we don't take all the credit for that. That's a true credit to our working with our pharmaceutical partners like Celgene and Millennium, who've been unbelievable. But as a result, we've doubled the lifespan of myeloma patients from three years to seven years. There's so much more hope. But um, we also recognize that our patients are still dying. It's still a fatal disease. And now our struggle is, what's the right drug for the right patient at the right time? Since we have a tissue bank, a genomic initiative, and a clinical network, those are the three legs to a stool to move to personalized medicine. But to attract industry now, we are happy to put together a clinical fund and pay per patient cost and fund trials ourselves in many situations. So it does come back to having the right team and having the financial wherewithal to really de-risk with the pharmaceutical companies and with our academic centers.